we're going to talk about supply side factors that may cause a high current account deficit in this lecture. So in the previous one we talked about the causes of a high current account deficit from the perspective of demand side factors. So we talked about um, business confidence, consumer confidence, income levels, population growth, tax rates, and all sorts of factors that may accelerate aggregate demand. Now we're going to see how aggregate supply can affect the current account deficit. So as we know, the CAD or the current account can be broken up into two for the purposes of analysis, two separate categories. So we have goods and services. Let's make that deal a little bit clearer. Goods. Actually, sorry about that. Goods and services. So the current account consists of goods and services as well as primary incomes and we're going to neglect uh, secondary incomes for now because it represents a very small proportion of the current account and may not affect put the count, uh, current account into deficit as much as these two accounts here would should there be changes okay so we're going to see how supply side factors can affect the account or the balance on goods and services. So as we know, the balance on goods and services consists of exports and imports. So what causes people to import more? Sure, we talked about consumer confidence and business confidence and income. So if we have more, more income, we're going to import more. But in, in other cases, we have supply side factors. And supply side factors include, so we're going to just put this asterisk as our first stop point. And so supply side factors include climate change, clim climate factors. Secondly, we have uh, costs of production. And lastly, we have wages, which can be a subset to costs of production. So why do people import more. So we can take a look at the example of climate factors. So let's say a cyclone. And in this case we're going to talk about the banana bananas. Uh, a pre few years back in, in Queensland when the, a tropical cyclone hit Queensland and the banana plantation all but got wiped, wiped out by the cyclone. And although the government to produce local to protect local producers they ban or they, they put a tariff or an import quota of bananas from other countries. And that's that's why we saw the banana price increase so much. But what if, take for example, there was no no tariff, so no government intervention, so no... So assume that there is no government intervention following climate a climate factor such as a cyclone or a drought or a flood, uh, whatever. So we can just note that climate factors could be drought as well, there could be a flood. So any adverse weather conditions that may affect the supply of goods and services. So what happens is people import. So after this, after a cyclone, people would tend to import. And why do people import is because of this idea of substitutability. We economics is a study of maximizing living standards. So when people don't get, um, when people don't maximize the needs and wants from domestic production, say bananas in this case, they're just going to import bananas from Brazil or New Zealand because, or um, Thailand or any country that has the climate to facilitate banana plantation. And they're going to import from that country because it means that they're going to satisfy the needs and wants um, at the, at, for them at the moment. So what this means is when imports increase, just going to put that as, as an arrow. Then we can see that net, or our net uh, balance on goods and services will decrease. So when imports increase, goods and services decrease, and therefore the current account would fall into deficit. That's one one factor that may cause climate factors or adverse supply side conditions. And again, when we have high cost of production here, we know that we have what is called the profit margin. So we know we have something that is called the cost of production. And if we do this on a graph, we have cost of production, 
then we have the markup so this is profit and we have price of say like ten dollars and so the cost of production is eight dollars we know that the, the the profit that they make is two dollars for this certain good so let's say what if what if cost of production increase so let's say wages let's say wages here increases let's say the cost of production increases to around ten dollars so now we can see the cost production production here has increased from eight dollars to ten dollars so they want they want to keep their profit margin at two dollars so they want this thing here to be two dollars so what they do is they bump up the price they're not going to sell more because of certain prevailing market conditions so what they do is they're going to bump up the price from ten dollars to twelve dollars and so this feeds into consumers so when cost of production increases for suppliers that increases the cost passed down to consumers and now assuming that this product is indeed substitutable say something like wheat for example if the price of wheat increases then consumers have the ability to move to another source of production say in New Zealand where the cost of wheat to, to purchase wheat is still at ten dollars here instead of twelve dollars so to maximize living standards consumers would tend to purchase wheat from New Zealand and again this would cause a decrease in our net exports because our wheat has become less internationally competitive in the in the international global market but at the same time because our wheat is so expensive we're going to import more from New Zealand because it's cheaper so when as we know when exports decrease and imports decrease net exports decrease and therefore the balance on goods and services also decreases here and again the current account would fall into deficit so they're the primary supply side factors that we, we, we're, we're very familiar with that we may cause the current account to become high or unsustainable let's look at the thing that we haven't really talked about so this doesn't really apply to Australia because at the moment we know that we have a very very strong terms of trade and if you want to brush up on terms of trade move on to the terms of trade lecture but we know that our terms of trade is very strong because of a high demand for our natural minerals from China but we still have a current account deficit so why is this the case it is primarily due to our the primary incomes balance or subcategory in the current account so what this entails is we know is interest repayments and incomes and this is a major cause of the high CAD that we've experienced in recent years so what this means what this is due to is due to the supply factor of a lack of domestic savings so we know that savings is important because whatever we save we're going to invest business are going to invest so savings in the perfect um, world or in at equilibrium equals investment so with our savings we can't invest because we're just going to consume everything and everything is going to be spent on consumable final goods and services nothing on capital goods or capital machinery so investment wouldn't take place without any savings so that's why savings is so important but now that we've entered a four sector model or five sector model with the overseas economy savings then becomes very very important or less less important to the extent that we don't need savings for investment to occur so how does investment occur how does so we know investment leads on to efficiency and r and d so we know investment is very important if we want to push our supply um, curve to the right so what happens is we borrow overseas so lack of domestic savings leads to borrowing overseas and what happens when we borrow overseas we need to we need to pay back in interest so they're, they're not gonna they have no incentive so overseas uh, non-residents 
have no incentive to lend us, say, bonds or money without the the, the, the um, certainty or the closer certainty that we're going to pay them back and with interest. So that's their um, incentive in lending to us is the interest repayments. And this is recorded in the primary incomes. So whatever we borrow from overseas to fund our investment spending, because we have a lack of domestic savings, because people are spending so much on consumable goods and services to satisfy their needs and wants, and they're not saving enough so that businesses can't invest. And so businesses to invest borrows overseas, and therefore that leads to repayments in interest. And what this leads to is recorded in the primary incomes of the current account. And that represents an outflow. So repayments, I want to note this in purple, so outflow. So repayments are an outflow of economic benefit or an outflow of purchasing power from an economy. And what this means is that the primary income will experience a debit which exceeds credits or money coming into the economy by bonds. So when debit exceeds credits, the current account would then again fall into this idea of deficit. So they're the causes of a high current account deficit, focusing on the supply factors. So we talked about climactic conditions, so clim climate change, um, drought, floods, cyclones. So climatic conditions can affect the supply and therefore the exports and imports of the economy, which are recorded in the balance of goods and services, which may cause the current account to fall into deficit, production costs, and finally, the lack of domestic savings, which would then result in high interest repayments recorded in the primary incomes category of the balance of, of, of the current account, which causes a deficit as there are interest repayments representing an outflow of purchasing power from the economy.